So we are recording on Zoom. And now let me get, let me check, uh, say something so I can check your levels on, on the, rec the other recorder. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> are you ready? Yep. Okay. On this week's episode of the podcast, My MK Life. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner with Yesner Law, and I want to first really quick talk about our sponsor. So those of you that have been listening the last couple of weeks know that we picked up a new sponsor, Elliott Wealth Management Services. Uh, for our listeners, for all of you listening today, they're offering a free 15-minute life insurance checkup. So you can schedule your checkup at their website, which is elliotwealth.com, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -T, wealth.com. Click at the life button at the top of the page. I was talking to somebody today who said she had a real estate investor client that didn't believe that he needed life insurance. And I was telling him how, I was telling her to tell him how wrong that was because you know what happens when he passes what happens to his interests in the real estate is his family or his business partners are they going to need money to keep those real estate investments going until they can sort out his estate so life insurance is for everybody whether you have it whether you don't have it go to Elliott Wealth Management Services at ElliottWealth.com click on the life button at the top of the page they'll give you a free 15 minute life insurance checkup to make sure that you're properly covered so now that we've got the bills paying out of the way, now that we've got all that stuff out of the way, I wanted to get to my guest on this week's show. So um, I've known my guest for a while. I've probably known her husband a little bit longer than I've known her. I've known her husband probably about three years now, give or take. And uh, he approached me. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He's a referral partner of mine. He approached me and said, you know, my wife um, racked up a lot of debt. And I said, well, that's really not a story. He said, but she made it, she paid off a lot of it as well. I said, now that is a story. So she does have a full-time job. Uh, she uses Mary Kay uh, for now to pay off all of her debt. Although uh, at some point she's going to become a Mary Kay director. I'd love to help her on that, which is the, the title of the show is My MK Life. And so I want to welcome on this week's episode of the podcast, Linda, Linda McElhaney. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, uh, my M MK life is a hashtag. Yes. Yes, it is. So why, when, why, how would I use my MK life? Um, we have multiple events throughout the year that we go to. Our biggest one is uh, Mary Kay seminar in Dallas where everything, um, they make all their products there. That is like the headquarters of Mary Kay. And that's their hashtag for all of our events. Um, even if we do parties at home, we can hashtag my MK life and put any information, pictures or things like that on there. So that's how they promote Mary Kay. So that's how we follow them. Cool. I, I'm going to, I'm going to use that hashtag in this show and see what MK traffic I can pick up for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be excited to hear about it. Yeah. That's awesome. But like I said, in the introduction, Mary Kay is not your full-time job, at least not yet your full-time job. Correct. So, yep. so nine to five, what do you do? I'm a purchasing manager at a nursing home. I just started there in February, actually. Um, I worked for the Pinellas County Schools for nine years as cafeteria manager. So i um, doing this now. And then the goal, of course, is to become a Mary Kay director and be my own boss and like my husband, be an entrepreneur and um, not have to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and work for someone else. <laughs> well, hey, so, I'm, no, I'm no. an entrepreneur. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> is that I don't work for anybody else. Yeah. And well, I think maybe it would be nice to wake up at five and not work for anybody else still, but not have to go into work per se. <laughs> there you go. And I think your husband also gets up at five. I, I don't know, but I would assume at least on Fridays, he gets up at five. Yes. We actually get up together every day at the same time. Okay. <laughs> and, and just to give him a very quick plug, your, your husband owns a, uh, a CrossFit gym here in the Tampa Bay area down in uh, the Pinellas uh, Largo mm -hmm. Pinellas County, Largo area, right? Correct. Clearwater, CrossFit Clearwater. ABF. CrossFit ABF. Yep. So, so there you go, Ryan. We gave you a plug on, on the podcast. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the bill later. So we'll have to find out if he's listening. <laughs> yeah. That'll tell. We won't, I, I won't say anything about it. You don't say anything about it. We'll just see if he listens and here's the shout out. Will do. <laughs> okay. So I forgot we're doing this actually. 
he probably did. So yeah. your husband is working, he's got his business, you're working, you've got your business, mm -hmm. um, but you got into a little bit of debt, I understand. Yeah. So yes, how, I did. How did that happen? Um, so I am from New York originally. I moved down to Florida when I was 24, 13 years ago. And I had always had money when I lived in New York. And I moved down here and just started having to go back up to New York because all of my friends were getting married. And if anybody knows New York, everything is very expensive. And I was making a line cook salary, so $11, $12 an hour and um, not making enough money to cover what I was spending on flying back up to New York. Plus I was in eight weddings. So New York weddings are quite expensive. Um, maybe 800 to a thousand dollars per wedding. Um, so times that by eight <laughs> wow. and then just racked up. I got LASIK eye surgery, which wasn't cheap and uh, racked up just a couple other things. And a little late, little time later, I was $15,000 basically in debt. Wow. So did so, did were you and Ryan married at this point? We weren't married. Um, we only got married four years ago, so this was basically just my debt. Now I was on a, a lot of zero percent credit cards, so I wasn't like they weren't coming after me for money for per se, but I, I wasn't getting myself out of the debt either by the little money that I was paying on them and the little money that I was making, you know. So were you were you doing like balance transfers or you just had a whole bunch of zero percent? cards the, both okay. <laughs> trying to work the system as best as I could <laughs> okay Do, were, so, were you and Ryan dating or you met him when you moved down here or in other um, words was he helping out at all or did he have his own things going on he had his th own things going on as well okay okay yep. so, so this was just my solely my of course like we you know, I treated him Christmas gifts, holidays, dinner, stuff like that. So, but it was basically my doing of all the debt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then you got to the point, I'm assuming, where you said enough. Yeah. I, I, I pretty much thought there was, I was never going to get out of it. I just figured unless I hit lotto, there was no way that I would ever pay off any kind of debt like that. I, I've always worked at least two jobs because in the food service world, you don't make any kind of good money or it let, good money enough to pay off any kind of debt basically. So I always had a second job, but the second job never really paid at all. It was just, I felt like I was working more than I was actually making any money with it. So, but I felt like I was making a dent, even though like I really wasn't. <laughs> so. Okay. So what was that turning point where you said enough? Um, and it wasn't even something that was planned, which I love. Um, my friend who did CrossFit, and she did my makeup for our wedding back in March of 2015. She reached out to me that May and she was like, hey, I just joined Mary Kay. Could you be a face model for me? It's complimentary. And I was like, sure, why not? I had no idea what she was talking about. And she did the facial. I enjoyed the products. And then, um, you know, I, I just asked, I kind of asked her before she even told me about it. I said, how does this, how does this work? How do you even get into something like this? Because I've never done direct sales before. There's so many people that have done something at least once in their life. I've never done it before. And um, she shared some information with me. And then, you know, I heard that you can make some really good money doing this. So I was like, well, it's worth a shot. What's the worst that could happen? I've already, I'm already working. I was already working two jobs I had a full-time job and a part-time job. And then I took on Mary Kay as well. <laughs> so I really wanted to get the debt down. Okay. So, so you started in with Mary Kay and mm -hmm. then what happened? So I started in May of 2015 and my goal was really just to pay off debt. Um, I heard you can make really good money. We make 50% of everything that we sell. We're the highest direct sales companies out there. That sounded really good to me. And I heard that you can just, there's no limit on how much you can make, which is different than the school board where you're capped out at the level where I was, where I couldn't make any more money, no matter how many hours I worked or anything like that. So I just started booking parties and seeing faces and um, Ryan and I made a money goal. Um, and it was pretty low. It was like $275 profit a month, which is low, but That's we low. thought that would help. Yeah. I mean, it's low, but it's an extra $275 a month. 
Mm -hmm. I think we bumped it up after a little bit, but we sat down and looked at, looked at the bills and looked what, you know, what the damage was that I had. And we were like, okay, you know, there's, there's kind of, there's formulas we have with Mary Kay. So if you want to make X amount of dollars, it's advised you kind of see this many faces and, you know, we could always help people with something like that. And that's what my director did with me. We sat down and made a plan and a formula and, um, just by in 10 months span, I, anytime I made any money, sold anything or had a party, whatever, got a new recruit. Um, I just kept putting all the money towards the bills. And one day I just sat down and added up my bills because I have them on a spreadsheet and I paid off $4,500. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. I wow. just kept going at it. <laughs> Without even realizing it, $4,500 was gone. It, it was gone just like that in 10 months. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. So, and that was just doing this very, and I had two jobs and Ryan just opened his gym. So we were busy and that was just sprinkling in my business whenever I could. Well, and just to sort of skip to the, to today, mm -hmm. you, you don't have two jobs anymore. You have your full-time job and then Mary Kay. Correct. That right? Yeah, and that's correct. And then one day, Mary Kay will be your full-time job. That is the goal, yes. And when I met Ryan, he had a full-time job, and then the gym was almost his side gig, but now right. he left his full-time job, and now the gym is right. his full-time job. Mm -hmm, correct, yep. Wow, so yep. the goal here is two business owners, two entrepreneurs, each running mm -hmm. their own business. Yeah, and he approached me right before we got married because he was – in love with CrossFit, but he's, if he's, if he's ever going to listen to this, he falls in love with a lot of different things. So we were right about to get married and spending all this money on the wedding and in debt, me in debt still before Mary Kay. And he's like, I want to open a CrossFit gym. I was like, okay, you good plan. We'll discuss it after the wedding. Let's get through all of this first. And we did. And I started Mary Kay in May. We opened the gym in, we had like a small opening in November. So he just put his, he really wanted to do it. He really just fell in love with it and knew that it's something he wanted to do. And, and he did it. I don't even know how he knew how to do it, but he did. <laughs> he just yeah. recently moved the gym. I know it's, it's in uh, the, the bigger complex. He's got more mm -hmm. space there in the gym and I, yes. I, I would go, but I live in West Chase and I'm afraid of CrossFit. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I promised Ryan, so I'll get down there one day and now it's on recording forever. So unless I edit this part out, I'll have to get down there at some point. It so, is. so how do we then help you? I mean, the biggest knock against Mary Kay, I think is it's a multi-level marketing company. Mm -hmm. right. um, although having been involved with multi-level marketing companies and entrepreneurs and all these other people, um, it is beneficial. I mean, there are advantages to it. There are, I think it gets a bad rap because it's, it's perceived as, you know, if I'm going to get people in my down chain and then I get lazy, well, that's not <laughs> the case to, you know, mm -mm. You get people working with you, you help support right. them to grow their businesses, but you're right. still working on growing your business. Right. So and how do we help you to get to that director level? Well, we're actually not an MLM. So okay. we, we're not a multi-level. Um, so most people probably think that we are because I'm sure most direct sales companies are. We are not. Um, so we're not a yeah, MLM or pyramid scheme. So um, Mary Kay Corporate sends us. So for example, I have um, nine team members on my personal team right now. Anytime they put an order into the company, Mary Kay Corporate sends me a love check once a month on the 15th from their, a percentage of their wholesale order. So it never comes out of their pocket. Okay, I get it. If, same thing if they build their teams and so forth. Any, any level that we're at in Mary Kay, whether we're an independent beauty consultant or a national sales director, same thing goes. So we're making a percentage from their from their orders, but Mary Kay is actually giving us the money, not the people, not our team members, if that makes sense. It does. And, and okay. you know, I don't say MLM in a negative way. I've got, a oh, lot I know. Of, I've got a lot of friends. And actually, it was interesting when I was listening to a CD once, um, and the person said, you know, even my law firm is in mm -hmm. some capacity an MLM because yeah. my legal assistant is doing work. I 
potentially bill the client for that work. And so mm -hmm. I'm getting paid based on the services that she provides. Agreed. But, but because it's a law firm, people think, you know, people don't consider it an MLM. And I guess it's not because, you know, we can't split fees and she's not, you know, generating clients for me. But in, right. the, in the sense that I'm making money based on work that she does, that's very similar to a lot of MLMs. It's similar to what you're describing with Mary Kay. So I don't say MLM right. bad way. I just. Right, right. So um, do you have a pink Cadillac yet? I don't have one yet. Um, my director has had two so far. So, but I'm working towards the first level car. So in order to get the pink Cadillac, I have to be a director, which is what I'm working towards, but I'm actually on target. They call it for the first level, which is the Malibu. So hoping to have a free car here within the next few months. They literally give you a car. They literally give us a car. So, um, of course you have to earn it. So the first level there's, and every level there's certain ways to earn it. Um, but they pay tax title registration and 85% of your car insurance. Wow. So it's free for two years. Um, they actually have a co cash compensation as well. So if you don't want the car, you can take cash instead. So the Malibu is four twenty five a month. Equinox level is five fifty a month and the Cadillac is 900 a month. So if you need, so me, for example, I want the car, but if I were to really sit down and do the numbers, the $900 a month was at that Cadillac level may be beneficial because that's $900 a month, but I'm also going to be driving free Cadillac. So <laughs> not bad. And then the not second, bad. the second one you get, you can paint it uniform, uh, unicorn colors and give it to Ryan. Yes. I really want the Equinox. So that's what we're shooting for. Once we hit the Malibu level, we want to, I want to go right to Equinox. I want to get back to an SUV. So nice. So yeah. I, I want to sort of turn back. Um, yes. Sorry. To, and that's okay. I, that's okay. I want to turn back <laughs> to the debt for a little bit because okay. my question is, so, so as I was, I was taking notes as you were talking, um, you know, you had a budget, you had a plan, you had mm -hmm. a goal, you mm -hmm. discussed it with your husband. So you had uh, his support, you had his buy-in, mm -hmm. any other, any other tips, any other tricks, anything that looking back on it now, you can say, you know, this really worked for us in helping to get the debt paid down or you know, reverse. Here's a, here's a pothole that we tripped over. Uh, something that, you know, if, if the listeners out there are trying to pay off debt, something that they should mm -hmm. avoid any, any, uh, you know, input, good, bad, ugly, otherwise indifferent, anything that they should consider as they're trying to go on this journey to get rid of debt. Um, for me, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. So they give you a, you, they give you a year to try the business if you want to try for that long and they give you a 90% buyback. So if, if it was 360 days and I was not satisfied with the company, I could send back all my inventory and they would give me a 90% buyback. So that sold me because I was like, well, they're putting a pretty good stamp on their business. And this is making me feel like if I didn't want to do this, I didn't, I wouldn't have to keep all this stuff that I invested in. Um, so I just tried it and you know, the starter kit is a hundred dollars and it has over $450 worth of the products in there for people to start their business. We go into target and spend a hundred dollars in like two minutes. And what do we go in for like toilet paper or something? <laughs> I, I'm not allowed in target anymore. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, if it's something that someone's interested in for paying off debt, uh, wanting more flexibility, wanting to meet some friends, uh, wanting to support, um, anything like that, a free car to get out of their job. This is something I would just say to try. It's not for everybody. I say if it was for everybody, then we would have no customers to buy our products. So it's not for everybody. We do have men as well. So I have a man yeah. on my team. He's awesome. But um, I would just say if it's something you're just looking for something different or something on the side for fun, just try it. I mean, it worked out really well for me. It's working out really well. It's worked out for a lot of people that I know. And there's really great money in this company. I mean, the Gloria Maple Banks is our number one person in the Mary Kay world. And she's making like her last, one of her last checks was like $90,000 in a month. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. It took me three years in the school board to make like, that's crazy. Yeah. Do you have, have you set a goal for when you want the rest of the debt to be paid off? Have you set uh, an end date for that? 
I haven't. I kind of switched on that a little bit. Um, so we're going to Italy in June. I don't know if he has ever mentioned that to you. We're yeah. going away. Well, he didn't invite me. Oh, you can come. Okay, thanks. So <laughs> we're going to Italy for three weeks. It was supposed to be two weeks, and we misread the calendar. So we're going for three. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, in you know how we are, we're, we're so busy that we don't even know dates anymore. Um, I told him in August that once I went back to school, uh, back to work, I mean, um, that I would take my Mary Kay money and put it all towards Italy. So I shifted my business money instead of paying off debt to go towards Italy. But my new job is paying more. So that extra money is going towards the debt a little bit now. Oh, okay. So we switched a little bit, but um, all the Mary Kay money I've made from August to going to June when we leave is, is all going to the trip. So very nice. Yeah. Anything Which is fun. Cause you can take all that extra money and do whatever you want with it. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. And that's yeah. the benefit of having, you know, that side gig that a yeah. lot of people grow to being a full-time job. I mean, yep. I, I love the podcast and, and it was designed to support the law firm, but if I can get the podcast to a point where it will support me just to be a podcaster, my wife asks me all the time, when do you run or retire? And I say, is yesterday good enough? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, super fun to be your own boss. There you go. And we're doing the same kind of thing. We're not going for, uh, we're going for five or six days. You know, I've got the two young kids, so we're going to Disney in June. Oh, so, fun. That's I've been fun. doing the same kind of thing. Any extra revenue that gets spit out from the podcast, uh, the Crushing Debt book, I mean, any of the mm -hmm. side stuff that I've got going on, you know, that side money uh, goes into our Disney fund, which will be spent here in a few weeks. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think maybe by the time this episode comes out, I think actually this episode may come out the week I'm at Disney. So as <laughs> you're all listening to this, I will be on Space Mountain or something over at Disney World in Orlando. So, yeah. uh, it's super fun. We have a lot of people that my director will be like, Did, well, who, who took their money and paid off something or bought something or had fun with it? And you hear all different, a lot of things go to Disney. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have families. Yeah, especially so, with kids. It's hard exactly. to go to Disney with the little kids. Oh, yeah. So, it's fun to make a money goal if you want to be in Disney for a week, you figure out how much it will cost with hotels, tickets, food, and then make that money, you know, a goal and then work towards that with your business and then pay, you know, pay for it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Same kind of way you did it with, with, uh, Italy. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I knew what we basically, what it was going to cost. And then I've just been putting all the money towards it. So nice. Did you, have you hit yeah. your goal? Not yet. So I still have the rest of this month and then we're not leaving till the 3rd of June. So I have a few days in June. Um, so, but March was really awesome because that's when I went into what we call DIQ, director and qualification level. Um, and I got like an $1,100 check from just recruiting seven people. Um, wow. And I didn't really do much for except that they said yes. <laughs> and, and you can so, have, um, are the people on your team all are, all local to Tampa Bay or are they, does that matter? It doesn't matter. Um, as consultants, we can't recruit out of the U S as directors we can. So okay. it could be anywhere in the United States. It doesn't matter where they live, anything of the sort, man, female, whatever. Um, yep. And okay. they just like, we always encourage them going to a local meeting for training purposes. So we just get them. I just, someone on my team recruited his sister in Dallas so we're going to get her set up with a team in Dallas and get them working with her. So she, you know, knows how to do everything because we're clearly not there, but we'll have someone right. help her. So. Okay, cool. So if you want to get a hold of Linda, if you're interested in uh, talking to her about the, uh, the opportunities within uh, Mary Kay, her cell is seven or not cell her, uh, her phone. Yeah. Her cell 631-766-4459. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So anything that, um, and I'll put that number in the notes and, and I'll probably say it again here before the episode's over, but anything else you wanted to add? Anything I missed? Anything we didn't talk about? I don't think so. Just um, that my unit's name is going to be the McElhaney's Magical Movers Unit. <laughs> we're, okay. taking the magic <laughs> we're taking the magical a little bit from the gym, Ryan and I are kind of sharing the title a little bit. I was going to say that and, name, that name doesn't surprise me at all. 
<laughs> yeah, when, you know, my director like a few months ago was like, have you thought of a, of a, um, of a unit name? And I hadn't, and it just kind of came to me because most people use their last name with something. Um, some people don't. So I, Brian kind of liked it. And I was like, we can kind of share the magical world together. <laughs> so, but anyways, we're always just looking for more people uh, to join us in Mary Kay and our future unit. Um, so we're just looking forward to working with anybody that's interested in whether you want to make more money, have some flexibility, gain a car, meet some girlfriends, um, just use some amazing products at half price. Um, anything of the sort. And this business has really given me some self growth, self growth as well. Um, I don't remember when exactly we met Sean. I don't love talking at the and I still the 60 plus people still freak me out. 60 talking, we're, at, we're at 90. Oh my God. So the last time I had to do it, I was not happy. <laughs> um, but talking in front of a party of five to six women or people it's completely different. Right. So, but um, I was super shy. I used to hide behind Ryan at like work events. Um, and now I'm just like, okay, see you later. I don't, I don't really need you. <laughs> so the self growth has really helped me just talk to people I don't know and feel better about myself. And that was really something I didn't know I needed to work on, but I did. I knew I was shy, but I didn't know how much this would help me. And, and a lot of people worry about their um how um, they don't like to talk in front of people, their, you know, their speech in front of people where they get nervous. But once you're trained and we help you and, and we get to, we can just show you what to do. And it's really simple and it's so much fun. People are just literally putting products on their face and taking it off. Like you can't have a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just the self growth alone has really made me a better person. And my director's um, husband was here a few weeks ago. We had like a little director debut send like a little pre-party and he told her that she told me that he he was like that was a completely different Linda that I met last year so I didn't even realize it <laughs> but the self-growth has really been something that has been very very helpful well that's me in my life. yeah that's awesome that's awesome I, I I think that's great and and I yeah. agree I mean you know even from doing the podcast has got me to be a, a better speaker I always thought I was a really good public speaker this has gotten me to be a better speaker and then like you said every Friday morning uh, in our networking group, speaking in front of 90 people um, is is uh, training on the job. So yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, it's a little much. <laughs> um, ha I, I appreciate you being a guest on the show and sharing. I know talking about how you got into debt and how you got out of debt can be kind of a personal conversation. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you sharing that information with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was it was awesome at any time. And uh, again, if you want to call Linda about um, about Mary Kay, about side gigs, about, you know, becoming a director, about being on her team. Uh, her telephone number again is 631-766-4459. I will again, put that in the notes if you want to contact her again. Thank you to our sponsor, uh, Elliott Wealth Financial Services. Go get their 15 minute, uh, life insurance checkup. And I think with that, um, also visit us on social media, uh, you know, share the episodes if you enjoy the content. Uh, but I think that is going to put a wrap on this week's episode. And I look forward to talking to you in next week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. <laughs> Done there. We're still uh, recording on Zoom. So okay. if, if there's any kind of really cool content you want to give Zoom that you didn't give to the, uh, to the podcast, do it now. Uh, how so? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, let me I think stop. we covered it all. I think we did too. Let me stop. Let me yeah. stop Zoom here.